So in this video we're going to be looking at the effectiveness of the Quaif ATB limited slip differential. We have a long wheelbase canter here which has the LSD fitted in the front axle and we have a short wheelbase canter here which has an open front differential. So let's take a look and see which of these vehicles performs most effectively off-road. So before we understand torque biasing discs, we've got to understand what differentials actually are and their off-road limitation. Take a look at that front right wheel and I'm going to explain what's going on with it now. Now this is not a differential, it's simply one shaft driving another shaft, but take a look at these two marks on the wheel. So I moved the vehicle forwards, they roll in unison as you can see, and then I turn this and both wheels turn at exactly the same speed. Now this is great if you're just going to go backwards and forwards, but going around a the corner there's a problem. Watch what happens, as I go around a corner, both wheels still turn at the same speed. This one should go faster because it's describing a greater arc than the inside wheel, but it can't. So what happens is this wheel has to skid, as you can see. So that's not ideal. Now, to solve the problem, we have something called a differential, which is here. Now, we're going to go over the cogs and so forth. It doesn't really make any difference. But um, again, if I turn this, you can see that both wheels turn in unison. And if I push it along like that you can see again both wheels turn in unison again we've got two wheels turning but here's the difference if i now turn it in a corner watch what happens see that the outside wheel is able to turn at a different speed relative to the inside wheel now that's great because when you go around a corner and you have your defense you're able to turn both wheels yet the outside wheel can speed up and in a car if that doesn't happen then that wheel will scuff and skid over the ground the car will just want to describe a wider arc you'll use more fuel you'll damage your drive line and uh, generally it's it's a problem which is why the differential is just so good but there's a significant problem with the differential going to come to in a moment now here's the problem with differentials. Take a look at that front left wheel, it just spins pretty much uselessly. Eventually the brakes grab it, and that's brake traction control which I fully explained in another video. But that's effectively the differential problem with off-road vehicles. And there's a whole number of solutions to that, of which brake traction control is one and ATB, which we're going to look at, the automatic torque biasing differential is another. Now here the vehicle's coming through again, but it's got the differential locked out. This is what we call a locked differential. So both wheels on the rear axle in this case have to turn at exactly the same speed there's a bit of wheel spin there and you can see that's made a significant difference now this hill is also the first hill we're going to send our two trucks up so i'm using these four wheel drives so you get an idea of a known quantity this is my car with the brake traction control disabled now i've enabled the brake traction control you see there's a few more revs required and it will pull through so it's not a difficult hill but it's you, you can't you can't crawl it unless you've got um, some form of traction aid that's for sure and now i've just engaged my rear cross axle differential lock and in this case that's a very effective traction aid for doing this hill and you're going to see the two trucks on it um, shortly but first i'm going to explain how that atb actually works so there's many different types of differential, otherwise known as a diff. There's the open diff, as you've seen, that's nothing particularly special. There's a lockable axle differential, which you've just seen demonstrated on the Fortuna and Ranger climbing up the hill, which eliminates differential, actual, uh, differential action on an axle. And there's the LSD, or limited slip differential, and that allows some slip so the car can turn, but not a lot so the wheel doesn't spin completely uselessly when one wheel on an axle starts to lose traction so it's better for traction than an open but not generally as good as a lockable axle diff so there's many different types of lsd we're going to focus on torque biasing in this video now for torque biasing discs many manufacturers make them there's torsen there's posi traction the ashcroft atb or automatic torque biasing the detroit true track and the quaif atb which is what we've got fitted to the canter now let's take a look at how it works from the driver perspective there's enough video out there talking about the gears inside of it let's look at it from the driver perspective so ATB automatic torque biasing a normal or open diff just spins the wheel with least traction that's all it does and that's pretty useless off-road now an ATB cannot send more torque to an axle than the 
um, than the engine is providing, but it can bias torque from one side to the other, which is a kind of cross-axle multiplication effect. Now, how does that work? Well, let's take a look at three scenarios to set the scene. The first is that on the front axle on this car, we've got equal weight on the left and the right wheels and therefore equal amounts of grip. Now, as the front left wheel goes into a dip, then we have less weight on that front left wheel and more weight on the right. That means that the grip on the left is going to be not as great as the grip on the right. And finally, we have a situation where the left wheel is completely in the air. All of the wheel weight is on the right wheel, so there's no grip on the left and and all the grip is on the right. Now in that case, the open lift would just spin uselessly. So those three scenarios kind of set the scene. And now let's talk about what the ATB diff looks like. So we're going to start with an open diff. Again, that's um, with an axle 50-50 on the left and right. And that's 100. We're going to say there's 100 units of torque going to an axle. And we need 60 to move. So we can move with the open diff. And on flat ground, the ATB is exactly the same. We've got a bias ratio of three, and that's going to come apparent in a moment or two. Okay, now we're going to put both wheels on the ground, but the right has got less load in it and grip. And that means that we can't put quite as much torque on that wheel on the right as we could before. So that's maybe only 40. That means that the other wheel, because an open diff always equalizes torque, can only take 40. So we can only put a maximum of 80 through. Now the ATB can actually, can obviously only take 40 on that lower wheel, but it can actually bias the torque over to the other side so we get 60. We can still put as much power to the ground as we did before, whereas the open diff um, has, has starts to get limitations. Now we make that hole a little bit deeper and because there's even less weight on it, that right hand wheel can only now handle 25 units and that's as much as the other wheel is going to get so we can only put 50 units on this axle, we need 60 to move, we're not going anywhere. The ATB can bias the torque, 25 times 3 is 75, so we're still putting the full 100 through um, those back wheels there but just with that sort of torque biasing or kind of multiplication effect and that is the power of the ATB type diff. Now if we get to the point where the wheel is completely in the air well we've got zero resistance, zero torque there and in effect zero the other side so that is going nowhere that's when you see the vehicle cross axled with diagonal wheels spinning uselessly. So what happens if the ATB in this case well zero times zero is still zero so that is when the ATB starts to work in effect as an open diff and isn't really much use off-road and that's its disadvantage compared to a classic cross-axle lock diff. Now in racing cars and rally cars and things like that you very rarely get to this sort of situation so it's a very very useful diff. Um, off-road you do often get to this situation so it's still useful but uh, not quite as good as a locking diff which just continues to turn regardless of whether one wheel is in the air or not. So let's take a closer look at our two canters then. On the left, we've got a green one with a Quaife ATB front differential, a Thornton LSD in the rear and a standard suspension. On the right, we have a open front diff, a Thornton LSD in the rear and parabolic suspension, which should flex a little bit better. Now there's some other differences as well. The wheelbase on the green vehicle is 3.4 meters long, which is about 200 mil, maybe more longer than the average four wheel drive. So its wheels won't quite be in the same ruts as made by typical four-wheel drives. The short wheelbase vehicle has a wheelbase which is only 15 mil longer than a Land Cruiser and actually shorter than many four-wheel drives. So its wheels are more likely to be in the ruts and it's more likely to get cross-axled. Also is important the fact that the green vehicle has 60% of its weight on the rear wheels, 40% on the front, whereas the white vehicle has pretty much 50 on the front and also 50 on the rear. Now that 60% on the rear will give the green vehicle a bit of an advantage as I'm going to demonstrate now with a model. So to demonstrate the advantages, I'm going to weigh this model and you can see it's 55% on the front axle, 45% on the rear axle. Now if I add some brake pads to the back, that changes to 55% at the rear, 45% at the front and it's now heavier. So let's go up first without those brake pads and you can see that due to the even weight distribution, we get diagonal wheels in the air and as the diffs are open, it doesn't really go anywhere. Now if I weight the back, that has the effect of 
adding a bit more traction to the back and allowing less flex and you can see that the car just moves up and all I've done there is just add weight to the back and so you'll see that the green counter has an advantage over the white one for that reason alone let alone the ATB diff in the front. So let's take a look at our first vehicle which is going to be the canter with the open front differential and you can see it gets to a stop here and that front left wheel just spins and we're going nowhere and we'll take another look at it from this point no weight on the front left or the rear right for that matter you'll see that in a moment now here you can see both wheels front left and rear right spinning at the same time and again you can see it at this point over here and that LSD isn't powerful enough just to quite move things forward um, and there's no drive on the front wheel because effectively we're getting no torque going to that right wheel and there's another view from the GoPro So time for the green canter now and this actually makes light work of the hill. It's got three advantages, one is the longer wheelbase so it's wheels like in the right, secondly that rear weight distribution we just talked about and thirdly the ATB diff and it's the latter we're most interested in, we'll have a look at that in detail on some other obstacles. So another view of the green canter and again its advantages are quite apparent, even lifting the wheel in the back actually still over to panel three now take a look at this see that the back wheel never gets into that rut at the same time as the front wheel is out but you can start to see that there's less spinning on the rear wheel and what you've got to look at particularly is not when the wheel's in the air because the ATB diff is doing no good but when it's close to being in the air that's when it really starts to help so if we watch the wheel come up here you'll see this one start to get unweighted and spin that's about there right there that's where before it comes off the ground that's starting to help drive torque to the other wheel. Now this has got nothing to do with diffs but I thought I'd show it because it does show how a slightly different driving line can lead to successful failure. You can see that in the right hand side of the screen the vehicle is successful in getting over the ruts, in the left it is not and that's just due to a slight positioning of the wheels. Essentially the wheels are further in contact with the ground on the right hand side of the screen and therefore there's less need for suspension flex and the vehicle can keep moving without traction aids. OK, now we're going to take a look at our second hill and to uh, calibrate it, I'm going to put my car on. That's no brake traction control, so it comes to an early stop there. Now I'm going to try and crawl it using brake traction control and you see I'm going to come to a stop and just increase the revs and eventually it moves forwards. Um, but I'm not going to get any really further than that, so that's the end of that run. And now I'm just going to put the rear cross axle defens differential lock in. You can see that goes further, but take a look at that back axle and even though there's a lot of weight on it it's turning so that shows that the rear locker is in and that's as far as I can go. So now I'm going to drive the hill completely and this means second low and use the rear locker and that's the sort of momentum I need in the Ranger to be able to get up that hill so that gives you an idea. Now let's take a look at the white canter and see how far this one gets. So it gets as far as over that first rut and again out of axle flex and that is as far as the vehicle gets no further. Now we're going to take a look at the side view of this canter going up the hill and that's going to demonstrate once it's got some weight on it the LSD is really quite powerful. Look at that, there's weight on the wheel and you can see that that right rear wheel is turning here in slow motion, see that? You've got it turned in and that's because there is some weight on the other side of the wheel. Now here's the green canter and remember that's got advantages, it's got the longer wheel base, it's got the ATB in the front axle, it's got 60% of the wheel weight on the rear so it can lift the wheel and keep going. So let's take a look at it on the complete climb now. Now from this angle you can clearly see that the front wheel lifts. What, now that's a disadvantage but it actually means that the rear axle can do more work. You can also see the wheel spin starting to be arrested by that ATB diff in the front. 
Now, from the front-on perspective, again, you can see the wheel lift there, but look at when the wheel is not quite in the air, and you'll be able to see that um, it is being arrested, particularly when it comes up at this slope here. Take a look at the left and right wheels, and you can see just how effectively that ATB diff is working in the front. And from the side here, you can also see exactly the same. Again, look at when the wheel is not quite in the air, and almost spinning, that's when it's sending torque to its partner on the opposite side. And towards the end of this run, take a look at the front wheels again. Look at that front left wheel. And you can see that it's not quite off the ground, but it's still transferring torque to the other side. And I've just cropped it and put it in slow motion so you can see that effect. So look at the rear right wheel, it spins a bit, but that's that rear LSD really working very well. And also the front axle actually pulls the vehicle up when both rears are spinning as well, and that's the ATB in action. But again, it needs both wheels somewhat on the ground to work effectively. So you can see the rear LSD in action there, even though the vehicle's got weight on the wheel, it spins a little bit and then just catches and goes. And then we've got vehicle cross axle at this point. The front axle comes down. We've got a little bit of rear wheel spin, but the front axle just helps pull the vehicle through. And that's the ATB diff in action right there. Now, this is why left foot braking works with an ATB. Let's just take those two points there again. Um, so we'll start off again with our familiar 50-50-50-50. When we get over to the point where we've got one wheel in the air, remember that we previously had 0, zero for the ATB. Well, imagine that we just add 10 units, a light brush of the brakes. Well, we've got 10 units of resistance on that wheel in the air, but we multiply that by three and we suddenly get 30 on the wheel with traction. And that is why lightly brushing the brakes with an ATB works quite quite well, much better than with an open diff. Let's look at pros and cons compared to an open diff in the context of the canter. Now in the rear of the canter you've got that Thornton LSD which is really effective so there's no extra cost to it, standard with the vehicle. It does increase your turning circle off-road and um, on road but then that's just part of an LSD and it's still still livable um, it's super effective off-road and it's automatic and it's so good that um, I don't know if you'd necessarily want to um, put much in the way of the rear replace it with a lock it probably would be better but um, it's certainly a very very good start the way to improve the capability to canter off-road is to look at the front axle and then you've got two options you've got the ATB um, or you've got the manual locking diff. The manual locking diff is more expensive and it would be more effective off-road because it wouldn't behave like an open diff as the ATB does once a wheel is in the air, but the ATB would make a significant um, Im improvement. And um, on road, there's going to be no change to either of them because you're not going to be driving the front axle on road. It's only a two-wheel drive on road. Off-road, the manual locking diff wouldn't make any difference to your turning circle until such time as you engage it, and you can simply unengage it, whereas the ATB would. So those are your pros and cons. So to summarise then, the rear LSD in the canters is quite good, but it is not as good as a rear locker. You saw that with the white car on the initial hill, a locker would have just seen it cruise um, up there. The Quaife ATB does make a difference off-road, but it, again, it is not as effective as an axle locker because that works even when the wheel is completely in the air, but the ATB would make a difference. Weight distribution to the rear may be effective. Now, in off-road situations, it's not a case of saying always, but you can see that in some situations, a bit of a rear, rear bias would be effective. And a longer wheelbase than average may also be helpful, but then that does give you disadvantages in ramp over and also maneuverability. So again, it's not a case of always. So I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments and thank you for watching.